Hello, everyone. Welcome to the radio show. We're in Newtown Radio. And today we have an interesting episode because you like the previous one and we're kind of doing the same thing, but part two today. Because what we're doing today is answering your questions about New York City and living in New York City. So if you watch the episode that was last month, I was answering questions like, is it possible to live in New York as a waiter? Is it possible to move on an artist visa? Is it possible to make enough money? Where should I live? Um, how should I navigate? Is it really that expensive? And things like that. And today I have part two of all these questions that I want to answer to you. So to be completely, completely and truly honest with you, because that's what I do. I am just honest. I was trying to get a guest today to talk about dating in New York City. And although I got so many requests for dating in New York City and so many people that wanted to come and share their experiences because the show is happening live on in Brooklyn on the middle of the week, like Wednesday, 8 a.m. in the morning. And as you see, I was late myself. Apologies. Um, it was a little bit harder to get a guest because a lot of people who really, really wanted to do it couldn't do it at that time. So although I do have a lineup of interesting guests coming up and talking about being an, an entrepreneur and career advice and still we're going to do the dating thing and we have entrepreneurship. Did I say entrepreneurship? I'm sorry, it's 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, but uh, we do have interesting guests coming to talk about, you know, uh, public universities with, uh, versus private universities and things like that. But I will get this guest and I will get somebody who can actually come at this time because I know it is hard. But for now, you got me. And this is uh, awesome as well uh, because um, it's 8 a.m. And I am super happy and energetic because I went to sleep at like 10 I am so tired, you guys. If you're following me on Instagram, you probably know my crazy, crazy schedule and what has been happening. But yeah, if you want to know a little bit about it, since we're going live, um, if you have been following me for the past year, you know that I haven't been um, watching from Russia. Damn. Hi. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> but uh Anyway, I haven't been doing much music and that's because I have a hectic year and it's like it's still there because I just recently moved. So I'm still like in the process of like building everything and doing, you know, everything I need. Let me just fix that thing. Um, is this better? I, I don't even I don't know. Is this better? OK, um, just because we're recording for YouTube later. But yeah, it's been very hectic. So I haven't been releasing any music and I'm coming back to it now. I still have to, to do like this little, uh, the process of moving because it's long and taking time. I also started my semester and I'm doing uh, my English major, creative writing uh, path. So uh, it's been a lot of, you know, a lot of reading, a lot of writing. I'm doing my own things. I'm working on my own thing. I have my personal life. I have my dog to take care of. I have this radio, which is my new baby since like last year. So it's been a wild ride, but I am working on new music. I am working on a new album, which is pretty exciting for me. I'm very excited about that. Let me just, again, fix that because YouTube folks... Okay, there you go. Now you can see my face. Ah, it's better? Is it better? I hope so. Damn. Okay, let's just raise that up a little bit. So usually in the mornings, I'm a bit chaotic because... So <laughs> this morning, I decided it's a good idea for me to wake up and cut my hair. Um, I, don't worry, don't panic. It's just the edges in my thing. But yeah, I was like, yeah, this is a good time to cut my hair at 7 a.m. in the morning and 7, 7 in the morning. And then I was like cutting it and thinking, oh, I don't have time to eat breakfast or do anything else. So interesting. OK, anyway, thank you for uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll be answering your questions about New York City because I'm going live. I am recording the podcast. Yes, it's going to be on YouTube so you can watch it later. I'm also going to post it on my Instagram so you can watch it later. Good morning to everyone who's watching live. Good morning, Newtown Radio, if you're listening live. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm going to be answering questions about New York City. And if you want to ask anything during the um, during my questions, uh, you can also ask a question here in the live and I'm going to be uh, watching this so I can answer your question right away and get to today. So today we have one hour of finishing around 9.20, 9.25 because I have to get to class. But give me one moment just to set my YouTube and I'll be with you in a second. So, you're, so this is part two. So if you want to watch uh, which best 
street best street on NYC okay best street is a very it's a it's actually a good question and I think I mentioned it when I was talking about neighborhoods um, but I was saying that it really depends on what you do and um, what like what I think what feels and what are you looking for to get out of the city uh, because let's say for example if you're coming to New York with a family you're already settled you have like a regular job or you're working from home and you want like the peace and quiet I would definitely suggest to checking maybe like away from the center maybe Astoria Queens maybe Brooklyn and the areas that are a little bit more quiet um, but if you're a young professional maybe like let's say if you're maybe in finance or you run a business or you work in a bank or you know you have like more that type of job I would definitely suggest Manhattan because everything happens in Manhattan everything like all the finance all the all this like young professional New York life this happens in Manhattan when I say Manhattan I, like for this um, scenario I'm talking more midtown downtown but that is very noisy so if you're still looking to live in Manhattan, but you want something a little bit more quiet, um, I would suggest Upper East Side, Upper West Side, something like that. Um, if you are a young artist or like generally an artist, you know, and you want like this type of life and you want the noise and you want, you know, the, the, the nightlife and all that, definitely Brooklyn, definitely Brooklyn. But watch out because Brooklyn has a lot of areas that are not as nice. So saying Brooklyn is very wide um concentrate maybe on like bushwick williamsburg they're expensive though they're very expensive so if you want to go a little bit cheaper i would say bed around park slope but also like watch out for neighborhoods that are a little um more um you know like let's let's develop maybe a little bit more dangerous especially if you're um walking at night often if you're going out late at night so just check your neighborhood before and what I would recommend um, let's say learn even long come to a say well you mean without crime um, so yeah in Brooklyn I would say uh, again it's it's not that dangerous here like it's fine <laughs> Uh, but I would recommend, like, Williamsburg is definitely not dangerous. Bushwick is fine. Mm, there are other, there are some other neighbors. I'm not, like, the best person to ask about Brooklyn because I live in Manhattan and now I moved to the Bronx. Um, but, yeah, I would say Williamsburg and Bushwick, definitely um, good neighborhoods around. What's this park? Prospect Park. Around Prospect Park is really, uh, is really nice. Uh, but yeah, generally, just like my best recommendation would be don't rent anything until you actually come here to see. Because first of all, there's a lot of scams online. Like if, you, if you're looking, like most people will go on Facebook and uh, ask like in a group like subletting in New York and renting apartments in New York. Guys, you have no idea. I have no idea how many scams there are online um, from for this like, um, you know, like, oh, send me a deposit of thousand dollars and you know this is your apartment and then you get there and there's no apartment no keys no person nothing it happens all the time don't send money to anyone until you physically come here see the apartment with your own eyes see the person sign the actual contract only then you can rent an apartment so i would suggest if you're coming here um i'll answer to you about brighton beach in a second um, if you're coming here, I would recommend for a week at least to get an Airbnb. Um, hotel is a little pricey or maybe like sleep with a friend, like if you have friends or family here that you can come or maybe like a short sublet that is not committing and only then start looking for an apartment because looking for an apartment in New York from outside, very hard. And if it looks too good to be true, it's too good to be true. It's not real. So don't buy, like, there is no rent for $1,500. Like, no, don't, don't buy into it. It seems good. And they usually push you. They were like, oh, it has to go now because I have other people. And if you send me now, it's going to be yours. Don't fall for that. Just don't do that. It's very dangerous and you'll uh, be left without money. Uh, regarding Brighton Beach, Brighton Beach is really far from the city. Um, it's a good area. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of Russians there, so definitely uh, Brighton Beach, like if you're coming from Russia, if you speak um, Russian, Georgian, if you come from the um, 
I don't know, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, like all these areas, Ukraine, of course. Although Ukraine, there is a lot of Ukrainians in Manhattan. But uh, Brighton Beach is a very like a uh, mini Soviet Union, I call it, mini previous Soviet Union, because it really like it's really Russian, really, really Russian. Everyone speaks Russian. You have Russian stores. You have like all this thing. So it really depends. Like if you want to blend into, into this community um, for sure. But if you want to um, blend into like the American lifestyle, um, I wouldn't recommend Brighton Beach uh, right away because it's just going to be very hard to meet people, f- you know, like American people, uh, people from different cultures because it's very Russian oriented. Um, there's a lot of background noise and I am um, background noise. Yeah, because you don't hear the mic. Um, let me see if I can. There is. Give me one second. Okay, I hope this is better because I turned off the weird thingy that was here. So I hope now we're back. Okay, let me um, let me let me know if the noise is better. Uh, let me jump into the question, which connects actually relates to what you were asking about Brighton Beach. But what's the best way to learn English? Which is a great question. Oh, good, perfect. Thank you, Ramon. Um, so. The best way to learn English. There are so many ways to learn English, you guys. And let's assume that uh, you're coming from a budget, right? Like you, you don't want to go into school. You, you don't want to pay for, you know, English language education because you have a lot of expenses coming new to the city and it's usually expensive. It's like around, um, I think, like $400 a month to attend an English school uh, full time. It is an option, if, especially if you're looking for a student visa, especially if you're like before college and you want to like tighten up your English or you want to do the exams for the university. I forgot what's the name, TOEFL, I think. Yeah, TOEFL. So it, it will be a good way. There is like a lot of uh, the New York Language Center, there are other things. But if you want to learn on your own, first of all, you listening to this show is already you practicing your English, especially because I'm not an American, so I speak a little bit like... Um, I do have an accent, but like, I guess, easy English. Like, I don't have these complicated words just simply because I don't know them. So uh, this is a good way. Listen, to, listening to podcasts, listening to you know, watching TV, like watching Friends and things like that. You know, which they have easy language, so it, it's easy to follow. Um, um, but there is a lot of language exchange meetups in the city itself. So I would say learning through people is the best way. Um, Definitely if you... ah, There you go, wait. Okay. If you're learning through people, if you're meeting people, this is all, all like... It's just the best way because you speak it. You actually speak English. So I would recommend maybe you can obviously practice at home until you come here. But when you come here, go to meetup.com, eventbrite.com, go to join social clubs like what we talked about, like the See Us Soon, like the Shaka Club. Uh, It's in my previous episodes if you want the links or you can like text me later and I will send you the links to these social clubs. But it's, it's you meeting people and you communicating and a lot of people often find it very intimidating, especially if your English is not that good and you like don't want to talk to people because you're embarrassed. Um, don't worry about it. New York is a very, very, um, how to say, like, how, what's the word? Like, there are a lot of immigrants here. There are a lot of people who came from different countries. So people are... People don't pay attention to your accent, to whenever you say something wrong. And I can always tell people, like, if I say something wrong, can you please correct me? Or you can tell a person, if I say something wrong, don't correct me. Like, and as long as you understand me, like, that's fine. I'm learning. Whatever you want. But it's, that's the easiest way. And people here are very nice and very accepting. And it's always, it's always nice to just communicate with people. And then you will see that living here, your English will just gradually get better and better every time. You're also probably going to find a job. You know, you're going you're gonna to belong to some places. You're going to communicate in English, whether it's looking for an apartment, you know, working at your job or to go to the supermarket, you will communicate in English. So your English will get better. Obviously, you can also get uh, books, you know, workbooks or regular books and just read them or you go to the library, which is free. Um, and get resources there. You can go to YouTube. There are so many ways. But just but the best way, living here, you will have your language. Um, yeah, you can learn it from rap too. But depends which rap because um, 
what do you mean, Ramon, what do you mean by open community? Explain that, please. Um, yeah, so rap. You can learn from rap, but rap has a lot of slang and a lot of culture in it. So it really depends. Like, you really don't want to come here and accidentally say something you shouldn't because it's very cultural or say something that is very street and you're like, don't belong because that will sound very weird. You know, like every culture has their own, especially when we're talking about rap. Um, it has a lot of, um, you know, inside slang, you know, and um, some terms that maybe, you know, you, you can understand what they're saying, but you can't really use it, you know? And I'm not necessarily talking just about the N-word, but I'm talking about the different things, which is like, it's just going to sound weird if you're going to talk like that. Um, so, you know, you can learn, but just pay attention to what you are learning. Um, yeah, let's uh, skip to the next question. Um, do I need to have a car or can I drive with my European or foreign driver's license? This is a great question, by the way, because a lot of people don't know that, but you actually can drive with your uh, driver's license. I don't like I'm not I don't know about every country. But I do know that there are specific countries that you can come and your license, your, you know, foreign license, I think European for sure, uh, is valid for six months after your arrival. And then you're going to need to go to the DMV, you're going to need to do theory and test again, or I think there is a way to kind of like flip your driver's license from European to um, American, but I think it's just the easiest way is just to go to the DMV. The theory test is really easy and you can do the test, which is also very easy. If you know how to drive, you're not going to kill anyone on the road. I think you'll be fine. You're probably going to pass. So it's pretty easy. Um, but if you do need to have a car, so back to the question that we had there before, uh, what did you mean? What you mean the slang? slang is slang so slang is a street language is like slang is every culture every country has their own slang in russia too you know like in different languages so when i mean what's your slang is sometimes there there are things that different cultures will say and it's not if you as somebody who doesn't belong to the culture will use these type of words or language or just like accents it's it will it will sound weird and I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to demonstrate the slang or the words, but especially if you're talking about the black community in New York, um, they, they have um, the black community in New York, they, uh, especially if you're listening to like rap songs, you know that there is a different way of saying things. The, the easiest example would be um, the word ask. So we say ask, but a lot of people in the black community, they say ask. So you like, don't say that, don't talk like that because it's not necessary. It's not, it's not yours to say, right? You, that's not how you grew up. So that's what, I, what I mean, um, noticed uh, who you learn from and how you learn English. So it's not awkward or weird when you're using, um, specific phrases and, you know, cultural, um, types, type of language. So that's, that's what I meant. I hope that, uh, that is more clear, um, I assume. Um, I mean that maybe the word you're searching for open to other cultures. Oh, yes, <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Exactly. Thank you, Ramon. Okay. Uh, back to the car situation. So again, uh, coming back to what did you come here to do and who you are and when you, where you live, um, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm so distracted by this live. I'm sorry. I'm usually like I'm way more oriented, but I'm trying to talk to you guys. So I'm sorry that I'm like cutting myself off. Um, oh, hi from Chicago. Hi, hi. Hi back from New York. So um, car in the city um, in Manhattan, absolutely unnecessary unless you work in Jersey or like somewhere far away. If like you mentioned before, uh, if you live in Brighton Beach or you live in Queens and you maybe need to go to work somewhere far, you live more in like the suburb area. You can get a car, but just know that getting a car, the car, the cars here can be cheap. Like you can get a car for 2K, 3K, but the insurance, the parking, the tolls, just going from Queens to Brooklyn, to Manhattan, to New Jersey, to there, to here. Um, oh, that's going to rip your pockets. So maybe if you're a newcomer and you don't come like with millions, I wouldn't suggest that, especially because the subway system is so, I know we complain about it all the time. I know, but it's so good. Because you can get with the subway and with the buses 
almost anywhere. Yeah, sometimes like if you go really, really far away and I know that because sometimes I have clients like, pff, yeah, in the ass of Brooklyn, like so far and I live in the Bronx. So sometimes I will take the subway for two hours and I need to switch subway, subway, bus, 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 uh, cab. Oh, oh my God. Yes. So sometimes I would like, uh, I wish I had a car, but if you're the kind of person that you need a car like once in a while, you need a car just like sometimes, renting would be a better option. Like we have Turo. Uh, Turo is good with, by the way, with European licenses um, and you have all the other options. They're a bit less flexible with European licenses. So if you have American license, it's obviously going to be easier. But again, for the first three months and six months, you can use your license. They shouldn't do any, like they should it shouldn't be a problem. But I would definitely recommend try the subway system unless you live really far away because I live in the Bronx. Most of my work is in Manhattan. Even if I work like in Brooklyn, Queens, like far away in Jamaica or in uh, Jersey, there are trains that, uh, that go all the time. I work in Westchester sometimes. There is a way to get with a train. And actually, um, yesterday I was mentioning, I was mentioning to my boyfriend yesterday because I was saying it, it, when you take an Uber and you even if you pay like $50, think about it that way you still pay less than having a car because only for parking for having a car in new york you're gonna pay 300 400 500 if not more just for, for parking for having a car then you have insurance you have gas insurance is like what 300 200 a month um if the car breaks you know if you have tolls and oh my god so ordering an uber for 50 even for a hundred dollars sometimes still cheaper than having a car Again, unless you live in the suburbs, you go to work in Manhattan every day, you have parking in the building, you have parking at work, you have parking, whatever. So then, yeah, maybe that's a good idea, but maybe not right away. Um, uh, can you please not promote yourself here? We're kind of in the middle of the show, so thank you. Um, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so I hope that covers uh, the, the car thing. <laughs> The other question is how to start making friends. I think I mention it all the time in all my shows because we had the Shaka Club here. We had the See You Soon. Um, what else we had friend-wise? I think that's it. But I, all, but I always mention meetup.com, eventbrite.com. There are so many communities here that you can join. There are others. There is uh, 57NYC that is like more artistic, more for artists and entrepreneurs. But um, people say that it's hard to make friends in New York because it's like a lonely city and everyone is running around like crazy and everyone is always busy and always. Uh, um, nah, I like I disagree. I made friends here. It's possible. It really depends on your mindset. I'll bet I'll be back to that in a second. I just want to answer. Um, <laughs> only Subway in NYC. I mean, yeah, only Subway in NYC, but. If you live very far away and it's comfortable for you, like a lot of people in NYC still have cars, like that's fine to have, but definitely subway. I agree with you. The subway does the job. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um, back to the friends. There are a lot of ways to make friends. Um, I made a lot of friends who sit in the bar and just start talking to people or just go into a social event or going to a networking event and coming out with like a friend or two from there. Um, there are a lot of Facebook groups that can you know, also help like the NYC girls room, I think girls room NYC one and two, um, ladies on the Upper East side, you know, also where every community has their own, like the Israeli community, the Russian community, uh, the Georgian community, the, the Korean community, everyone has their own Facebook group. So you can always join. I have a, I have a WhatsApp group in my building that I can make friends from. So that's, you know, there are a lot of ways people here. I feel like People like it's common to think that maybe New York, because we're so busy all the time, like people think we're lonely and there's no like there's no real way to make friends. But it's not true because because of that, because people come here alone, usually like work, school, you know, things like that. Like you move here alone, even if you move here as a couple, you still want to find friends. And because of that need of that loneliness, let's say. You want to find friends. So people are very open to making friends, meetups, all these groups. Like it's very, very, very common here. So it's, it is possible. But you can ask me about that later or you can watch my previous episodes because I talk about it all the time. Um, 
I know movie. Oh, Taxi Driver. I watched that. So again, loneliness, I feel like it's a state of mind. Like if you are depressed and you don't want to meet people and you want, don't want to leave the house and you are not a nice person to hang out with, yeah, you can end up lonely, obviously. Like that's, it's, I notice it on myself. Like, okay, moment of honesty here. Like I notice it on myself when I am not in a mood, when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm a little sad. I don't want to say depressed because it's like very heavy, but I'm, when I'm sad, I'm not having the best time of my life. I don't want to see people and I'm not nice to be around. Like, so I rather to sit home and just, you know, be with myself until I fix this. And then I can come out and I can meet people and I'm more open to it. But, um, but then I notice it like when I come out, cause I still work, I still going out. I still like working with people. And when I'm in the state of mind of like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. I'm not making any friends. Cause I just like hating on everyone. I'm just like, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to anyone. And we all have that. And we all know that like, and, and it's important to acknowledge when you feel that way and to understand the source of the problem and then to go and fix it. And, um, Last episode, we had Mike and we talked about mental health and there are a lot of resources that can help you deal with that and a lot of communities as well of people who want to deal with that. And you can meet people there because it's very different than like a networking event when you need to be like, oh, I want to talk, right? So there are way to, <laughs> ways to make friends even when you're like that. But when you, I notice on myself that even when I feel like that, after I after I work on myself and I relax and I'm in a better mood and I go out, I project good energy. I'm a nice person to be around. People approach me. People talk to me. People want to hang out with me because I, and it's not that I'm being like offensive to anyone when I'm in a bad place, but I'm just like, you know, my mood is, it's just not there. People don't want to approach. Like I'm blocking them with my energy. And then when I open up, people naturally want to come in and, that's just the way it works if you believe in energy you don't believe in energy try that and see that this is how it works so uh, it doesn't have to be lonely it really really depends on you if you go out there and you try and you want to make friends you will not all of them will be your best friends and not all of them will stick but you'll make some friends like that's just how it goes um uh yeah, you can definitely find friends in church. There's a lot of churches here. Um, you know, not only church, like you have other religions as well. And you can go to the to the temple. You can go to, uh, you know, all, all the different religions. Like, here. but yeah, definitely a religious place. If you're a religious uh, person, that's a good place to meet your community for sure. Even going to, um, even if you're in sports and you go and you find a sports club or you find a run club or you're going to yoga or Pilates or whatever it is, like basketball, whatever you're doing, you can find friends there. Again, people are everywhere. You can find friends on the subway. But, not recommended but you can <laughs> um but yeah so that's a lot of ways to make friends that's don't worry don't even worry about that you will if the mindset is right um and talking about the subway by the way the next question is is the city dangerous should i avoid the subway i feel like it's a common question that a lot of tourists ask and a lot of newcomers because you watch those movies <laughs> like you said and you hear about that and you like you sit at home and suddenly like oh shooting in the subway in new york um that can happen like yeah uh but no the subway is not dangerous you could like that's fine um okay so tell you more about me so this is so today's radio show it's about new york uh but um more about me, it's like a different life that I do and um, we'll get there. We'll get there for sure. But I, th I feel like if you watch my Instagram, like if you see, if you scroll down, you kind of like know where I'm from, what I do, you know, like all these things. But thank you for asking. We can chat about it later and I can tell you a little bit more about me. Uh, but I, wanna, I do want to concentrate on New York today and living in New York and your question about like becoming successful in NYC, that's like a really loaded question. It's a really... Like we need to unpack it. You need to be more specific. Successful. What is successful? Successful in what? You know, like it's it's a lot. Um, everyone defines success very differently and different fields require different work. So, um, yeah, you can ask a more specific question. We can talk about that for sure. 
Um, where was I? Oh, avoiding the subway. Don't avoid the subway. You guys, subway is like the most helpful tool you can have here in this crazy city. Because, and although it's like problematic and it's annoying sometimes and it's just subway, it's still a way to commute. And I know some people avoid, especially I know a lot of girls, a lot of women that avoid the subway in late hours. And I completely understand. Like you don't want to you don't want to ride the subway with a creep on the other end and it's just you and him because it's 5 a.m., right? It's it's like, it's uncomfortable. But first of all, the last year, the amount of police on the subways, like ridiculous, insane. Like they, there's police everywhere, all the soldiers, like, you know, it's insane. Um, but even if you're riding at night, what I would recommend, because I ride at night sometimes, um, just like pick a cart that have a lot of people that has a lot of people. Like I, I would not go in a cart with just one man sitting there just because I won't feel comfortable because you know, it's the middle of the night. If the station is long, you know, it's like a long time to ride. It's a little like uncomfortable for me. But, um, if you go and you see like a cart with four, five people, that's, you know, that's where you'll feel safer. But during the day, it's so packed. It's like, there's so many people. There's really like, I, I really like, I never, um, I never felt like intimidated, intimidated or scared. I don't understand your smile is exactly like, what are you saying? I'm trying to like answer it, but I don't know what that means. But yeah, the subway is not scary. Like, and again, the thing is something about fear that I notice if you are scared constantly and you constantly like, oh my God, oh my God, something's going to happen. Something's going to, you kind of attract that to yourself. So like, chill, it's fine. He, like, Don't walk around constantly thinking that something's going to happen because I've been living here for three years, foot, foot, foot. Um, it's fine. You know, like nothing happens. Subway's always packed. There's always a lot of people. Obviously we have things happening like things are happening someone would jump in front of the train somebody sometimes we have shootings we we have that every big city has that but it's not something you need to like wake up every morning and be like oh my god maybe i'll die today in the sun like no that's no just take it out of your head that's that's not the case um it's fine and again there's like a lot of police and a lot of they're watching the subway so don't worry about that um um yeah, I mean, it makes sense, Ramon, because uh, so Ramon is saying, those of you who are watching on YouTube, he says that subway is um, almost the same everywhere, um, good and bad people. And I agree because it's underground and there is less visibility, I assume. I assume because of that, like there's less visibility it's a little bit more cl closed, you know, like in some uh, in some cities more than others, you have more homeless people there because especially in a city like New York, when it's cold out, they all go to the subway. So it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, being in subways in different countries, definitely, yeah, you can find good and bad everywhere. But just, again, if you're searching for it all the time, you'll find it. Just stop searching for the bad to happen. Stop searching for that fear and you'll be all right. <laughs> okay, cover the subways. Um, oh, talking about subways, are rats a problem? <laughs> rats? Ah, who doesn't like those? Um... And yet in NYC, you can become actor in Hollywood. No. So Hollywood and NYC are two different separate uh, ends. If you want to be actor in Hollywood, you should go to Hollywood, which is in LA. In NYC, it's more Broadway. It's more the Broadway. Uh, the theater is way more uh, popular here in New York. Obviously, you can be actor um, living in New York too, especially now because all the auditions are um, online anyway. If you go to like backstage, you know, and other like sites that you just can send a tape and then you can go to Hollywood if you're accepted. But um, yeah, so if you want to, if you, if Hollywood is the dream, you should be living in Hollywood, which is something that we also like, we talk about a lot on the show with my guests, like the difference between New York and LA, but definitely New York is more theater oriented, live uh, performance and um, Hollywood and films and everything that's um, in LA. Um, well, there is Hollywood in Miami too, but that's not, um, it's different. It's just a street. Like we, so there is Hollywood Boulevard in many cities, but the Hollywood that we mentioned, like that you mentioned about acting is the Hollywood Hollywood, like the term 
Hollywood. That's in LA. That's that's Hollywood in LA. Um, it's a neighborhood. It's not a, a boulevard. Anyway, uh, where were we? Rats. Yes, they are a problem. <laughs> they are a problem. But uh, no, the, like the thing is, there are a lot of them. And sometimes you go on the street just minding your business and a rat will jump in between your legs because they're trying to cross and they miscalculated the timing, especially on trash day when they it's a party. So yeah, that can be unpleasant. Some neighborhoods more than others. Funny enough, living on the Upper East Side, I had more rats than living now in the Bronx. I did not see a single rat in the Bronx yet. In my neighborhood where I live, <laughs> not in the entire Bronx. But um, yeah, so definitely I had more, more rats on the Upper East Side. Interesting enough, I guess. Um, so yeah, you're talking about something else. You're talking Home Alone is a different movie. Movies are shot in New York as well, but the Hollywood scene is still in Hollywood. Um, they're moving out from there because it's very expensive, but it's still like New York is not the place to search for Hollywood, if that makes sense. Um, even some scenes, like, for example, Friends, it was shot in L.A. It wasn't shot in New York. So, you know, other shows can be shot like um, CSI is shot here. I saw it on the streets. So it's it really depends. But the big acting scene is still happening in Hollywood. OK. Um um can you give us good places for different dishes oh sorry what can can you can you rephrase it i um different different what <laughs> sorry um uh well it they f because it's pricing right you can't always close the streets to um so um sorry um the question is why things that are filmed technically like the streets of nyc it's not it's filmed in different places budgets simply budgets and accessibility to the things you can't closing new york streets it's not easy like you close a new york street you have like a chaos happening so sometimes it's just easier to shoot on a different location and make it seems like, again, because also like renting the, you know, closing the space, it's all budgets, it's all money. Nobody wants to spend money anymore. So it's cheaper to shoot in Atlanta, in uh, Canada, in different places. Uh, where else? I don't remember. But yeah, cheaper than like Hollywood and New York for sure. Um, anyway, rats are a problem, but that's why I would not recommend you to rent a basement apartment it's more of a problem there especially like depending on the areas you know um for example i think um long island city and astoria they don't have many rats they have a lot of squirrels so that's less of a problem but they also don't have a lot of basement apartments but if we're talking about basement apartments and we're, to and we're thinking like more brooklyn i wouldn't recommend living in a basement apartment simply because it's also you can get a lot of problems first of all like basement apartments like, nah, nah like you don't have light you don't have air it's like stuff sometimes you have problems with the reception in the winter you have water coming through you have rats accessing like i wouldn't recommend a basement apartment if it's your, your last resort some basement apartments are not as bad but you again like i said in the beginning of the video you need to come here check it yourself see it for yourself and only then move in but not to rent something from outside thinking it's a good deal because it's a basement apartment and you come to a complete shit so just make sure um just make sure. Oh, burger places. Uh, I mean, if you, yeah. Okay, my opinion on sushi and burgers. <laughs> I love sushi. It's my favorite food. There are a lot of places I can recommend. But Ramon, if I'm not mistaken, you don't live in NYC, right? So when you come to NYC, you ask me again, and I'll give you all my favorite spots for sushi and burgers. Okay? But I will. Um... um mm -mm. NYC does have a lot of restaurants. It has such amazing food culture. You can get anything, anything you want here in New York. Um, I have my favorite spots uh, for sushi. Like Asian food is my favorite food. 
all types of Asian foods. So definitely I have a lot of spots for that. I, uh, um, burgers, mm, I don't know about burgers, probably. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of like street food and junk food. Like I don't eat bread and, you know, I'm trying to like cook more at home. So when I do go out, I mostly go out for Asian restaurants, like, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, Thai food. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So these types of cuisines, I have a lot of recommendation of those. I also like I'm a food photographer, so I work, work with so many restaurants around around town. So I know a lot of spots. I definitely know. And I tried the food in all these restaurants. So, yeah, I have a lot of recommendation. Hi. I have a lot of recommendation about food. But when you get to New York, hit me up and I'll send you a full list, I promise. Okay? Okay. Did you figure out the rat problem? Yeah, I think we uh, covered the rat um, problem. Uh, the next question is, is it really that noisy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the short answer would be yes. New York is so noisy. And uh, Mike and I talked about it last time in my previous show two weeks ago as we were talking about mental health. And mental health and the New York style are very connected. Uh, we talk about collaboration later, okay? This is a New York episode. We're talking about these... Uh, uh, questions so about collaborations hit me up later we definitely should but uh back to noise yes yes so new york is very noisy again depending on the neighborhood you live in if you live in more quiet areas like if you live in long island city which is very expensive by the way if you live in the suburbs if you live Maybe in like a more, if you live in Queens, for example, but like the suburbs, like the, the farther Queens where like there's no subway already, like just buses, definitely quieter. But let's assume you're coming to the city to live in the city, whether you live in Manhattan, like in the city, or you go to like the more populated areas in Brooklyn, like Williamsburg or Bushwick or things like that. Oh my God, the noise. <laughs> crazy it's insane it, it's like it's constant Ugh. if you don't have soundproof windows get some because uh you have ambulances and the fire trucks and the police and people screaming and cars honking and parties and music people walking with the you know the music um, you have a lot of noise, a lot, especially if you live around like a big, um, like, um, central road intersections or like, right. There are some apartments right above or below the, the subway trucks that are going like above the ground. Holy shit. I don't know how people do that. I don't know if you do it. I don't know how you, you do it because that's, that's very loud. Um, I have soundproof windows, thank God. But I, n I notice the difference when I open the window and suddenly all the noise comes in my apartment and it's like, poof, like it's crazy. Um, you get used to it though. You get used to the noise. Um, you get, um, it's fine. Like it's not that bad, but for your mental health, for your quiet at home, when you're at home and you just want to be at home and you don't want to feel the street, Obviously, it's better to get an apartment with soundproof windows um, so you have your quiet or to get an apartment in like in a more quiet area so you're not constantly being exposed to the street noise because New York is noisy. It's very noisy. Um, trash trucks going all the time, you know, cars, all these sirens you hear all the time, people yelling, screaming, especially if you live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is very noisy. Manhattan is very noisy. Queens is a little bit less, but it's still noisy. So, yeah. Noise is a thing. If you really, really hate the noise, go to, go to the suburbs, go to LA, go to, you know, upstate, maybe Jersey, certain areas, but uh, the city, maybe like don't live in the city. It's, it's very noisy. Even the quieter streets, you can still hear the noise. Um, you're near the Bronx. Yeah. So I'm in the Bronx too. And uh, I mean, that's noisy. That shit is not, Bronx is noisy. Again, certain depends on the area, but Bronx is noisy. I live like next to the water so and it, but my window is kind of like to the street so my apartment is more noisy for example than my neighbors that like their window is to the water and there's nothing there so they can only hear like some of it right and the train maybe the train tracks but 
passing like once a day, but that's it. But yeah, Harlem is very noisy. Um, again, try to find an apartment. And when you're searching for an apartment, just check, like stand in the apartment for a second and listen to the noise and make sure that your bedroom is sleepable. Let's call it like that, right? Because sometimes it sucks, right? You go to sleep, you want an open window because you want fresh air. You open it and you get... Ah! And uh, your sleep is just like uh, fucked. So yeah, just make sure when you're renting a place that you're renting the right place that you actually can live in. If noise is not a problem for you, if you can put like earplugs or you sleep with headphones or something, then I guess that's fine. But yeah, um, the short answer, the long answer would be yes, New York is very noisy. But again, some techniques um, that you can use. And uh, Mike joined the... um, the live actually so me and Mike talked about that and we and Mike gave some techniques to like relaxation um anxiety relief stress relief and things like that so if you're too stressed in New York City definitely go to this episode and watch some uh some of these techniques that we did online or just hit him up because he's attached to the YouTube video and you can talk to him and he's watching this so he's right here um Okay, uh, the next question would be, can you live in the city on a budget? Yeah, definitely. Um, people should also check for the crime rates in those areas. You absolutely correct for the, yeah, you're absolutely right. So we talked about it a little bit earlier. So you joined a little late, that's what you did. But we did talk about it, about different neighborhoods and checking the crime rates and checking the neighborhood because before you actually move in and not renting an apartment from outside of the United States before coming. Yeah, so we mentioned that. Thank you for mentioning that again. Definitely check the crime rates. Usually if you see like a lot of schools, you know, a lot of like, you can just walk around the neighborhood and kind of like see the vibe. That's what I did when I moved to the Bronx. I um, walked in the neighborhood um, during the day. I walked during the night. It felt safe. I moved. And the soundproof windows. Come on. Um, Um... what about Manhattan to live? I think so expensive a rent. Yeah. Okay. So, um, back to the question, can you live in the city on a budget? Um, yes, depends where and depends how, right? So Manhattan is expensive. You can live with five roommates then it's less expensive, right? Um, a lot of people, a lot of newcomers usually, uh, do shared apartments. So you rent, Uh, They usually join, like it's easier to just join to somebody who already like have the apartment and they just, you know, renting to the rooms to people. So that's very easy, but you can pay like up to a thousand dollar for a room. It's still expensive, but it is manageable and that's the cheapest way. Like if you want to still live like properly, right? And so you're going to live with like two, three, sometimes four roommates, if depending on the budget, if you want to go lower, like 800 for the not 400 that doesn't exist (laughs) um yeah but like 800 700 600 so yeah obviously if you live in a big house and you have like five six roommates that's manageable that's possible it's hard especially if you're coming from home where you live alone and suddenly you come into five six roommates that shit is hard like not everyone can do it you don't know the roommates often you don't vibe you don't click it can be hard but Coming back to the question, if you can live on a budget? Yeah, definitely. Depends how much you're going out. Depends what you eat. Depends what you do. I'm a big believer in cooking at home. Uh, so I don't eat outside often unless it's something that like I didn't have time to make food or I'm on the go or I'm just going out to have fun. Um, then I'll eat outside. But I cook at home. And if you go, I think the best supermarket I can recommend to you is Trader Joe's. Definitely very affordable. Uh, don't go to Whole Foods if you want to be on a budget, right? Don't go to Morton Williams because it's like freaking expensive. Don't shop on the Upper East and West sides. Just go to Trader Joe's. Um, fruits and vegetables you can find in markets, farmers markets, or Trader Joe's. You know, or order on Amazon Fresh, which is very affordable as well. Um, but you can it. But again, if you are the kind of person who wants to have a car, live by themselves. Um, go out three, four times a week. If you only order food, right? So, no, that's very hard. You need a very good job, a very sustainable job that will, you know, that will give you the amount of money that you need. But if you want to live alone, your rent is going to be not $1,000. It's going to be 
25 and above, almost 3K and above, right? If you want to live alone, depending on where. Obviously, if you go into the suburbs, if you go a little bit outside, it's going to be a little cheaper. But if you want to live in the city or somewhere like Williamsburg, Long Island City, um, these areas, it's going to be expensive. So it really depends on your budget. You can calculate your budget. You can see how you can navigate, ask questions. If you have a particular question about uh, rent, about how to calculate your budget, how to prepare if you're already preparing to come to New York, um, definitely hit me up later. I can help you because I kind of know the pricing. and like. But you also need to calculate that you have bills to pay. You have your phone, your Wi-Fi, uh, your Metro card, like the Omni or whatever, like tapping the phone doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Um, if you work, you have taxes, um, you have other expenses, if you have a pet, you know, and the health insurance. There are a lot of factors that you need to calculate. It's not only to come and think, okay, $1,000 for rent, I can find a job for, that pays me uh, $1,500 a month and I'm set. And uh, no, I uh, know. You have a lot of expenses. Things are expensive here. Depending on the neighborhood you live in, it's also going to be the the supermarkets prices are going to vary, you know, between like the city or the suburbs or whatever, wherever you're shopping, that's going to change. But, you know, also like moving, it's very expensive. Like if you're moving, you need to buy furniture, you need to get all the stuff, unless you're getting a sublet or an apartment that already is furnished, but you're still going to need to buy stuff. And then we have season change. So you need winter clothes, you need summer clothes. And will you have thrift shops? So it's possible, but it really depends on your lifestyle and what you're trying to get. I was able to get to the lifestyle that I love after three years. Not that I was like suffering for three years. No, I was fine. But the more I live here, the more connections I make, the work, the more work I do, the more I know where to shop, what to shop, how to do it, what's the best Wi-Fi to get, what's the best phone. Like I you'll get there, but I would suggest like when you just come in new to the city, start from the bottom and build yourself up until you understand. Because you don't want to jump too high and get an apartment on your own and then realize that you can't hold anything else because you forgot to calculate all the rest of the expenses, right? Like start slow and build yourself up and do it with awareness, right? And with calculation. Um, yes. Um, where are we as, uh, I don't know whose land is uh, Long Island. I'm not talking about Long Island, by the way. I'm talking about Long Island City, a big difference. Long Island is an island. It's like, it's... Um, it's not like New York. It's New York, but it's like, it's it's separate. Long Island City is one stop from Manhattan. It's where, like, it's next to Astoria. It's a new area um, that's developing. And it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's close to the city. It's very um, uh, accessible, but it's becoming very expensive. So just... I, I study in Long Island City. I study my my college is there, so I see the area all the time. It's it's an amazing area, but if, for me, like I prefer to live in the city uh, rather than in Long Island City. But there's a lot of uh, there's a big Asian community in Long Island City, by the way. Um, if you're uh, if somebody's watching and happens to be Asian and you want to be like close to community, like there's a big Asian. I think. Um, I think a big Japanese community, if I'm not mistaken, in Long Island City. I might be wrong because for sure. Yeah, the, a lot of Asian restaurants, Asian, Asian stores, um, Japanese department stores, which are cool. I love going in there. I don't understand anything it says on the boxes or anything, but like you have like a huge Japanese department store. You have everything from Japan. Really cool. Uh, if you're in Long Island City, it's next to Trader Joe's, next to the 7 train. You should definitely visit that. It's a cool store. Um, and a lot of Asian food, which is awesome. Um, why not to write a book for New Yorkers? There are a lot of books for New Yorkers. I literally have a book at home that's called Welcome to New York, I think. And it's just like all about that. So again, when you come to New York, I'll lend it to you. I'll give it to you. But yeah, there's, there, there are books about that for sure. Um, what about if you win a green card and with green card live in NYC, how is that document? Well, when you when you win a green card and you come here legally, um, obviously it's easier, right? But to rent an apartment and to, to be able to move around here, you still need to build a credit because you come like 
clean slate, right? You need to build a credit, which I don't want to go into because it's like a huge topic, but you need to kind of build your history in America. So you're still going to need to go through all the things that immigrants do because you're a newcomer. Obviously, it's easier for you because you can... You have your social security uh, with a green, I think, right? With a green card, I think you get a social security number eventually or right away. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and then you, it's easier to move because you, it's easier to just rent a place to like, you know, t- to exist here. Um, that being said, like it's, it's still possible without. So you don't have to, you know, if you are an immigrant or you just come here on a tourist visa for six months and you just want to stay here and see what's up, um, you can still move around. You Immigrants can open bank accounts, businesses, um, you know, things like that. So you, you can still move around. But green card definitely allows you to work legally if that's your document, definitely. It's easier. Um, yes, um, where are we? Oh, okay. We have three questions left and we have 10 minutes because I have class to get to. Let's, let's choose. Okay. Help me choose. So one question is, uh, what is so special about the city and why people consider it the best city in the world? Another question is, uh, can I make money as an artist? And another one is, I have a big dog. Is it going to be a problem when moving to NYC? So let me know which question you want real quick because we don't have time. Which question do you prefer? One, two, three, one, two, three. Answers? 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 No? Okay, then I'm going to choose. Okay, we're not going to answer because we have like 10 minutes left. So do we want to talk about the best city in the world and why? Making money as an artist or having a dog in the city? Because no one answered. Very sad. Very sad that you're not cooperating with me. You were talking until now and now when I'm actually asking you a question, you can't answer. I was asking you all your questions until now. This is so rude. Okay, let's talk about dogs because we have only 10 minutes and I don't have time. So we're going to talk about dogs, whether you want it or not. Um, I have a big dog. Is, is this going to be a problem moving to NYC? So yes and no, in a way. Again, like I mentioned before, it really depends um, um, on your budget, right? Uh, if you... If you have a good budget and you're coming with a pet, you're going to be fine um, budget-wise. But remember that you need insurance for your pets. You know, you need to get insurance. You need to get their food. You need to get their uh, routine exams. You need to get, you know, travel documents or whatever it is that you need for your pet. You know, and you have like vaccinations and things like that. That's going to take um, a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Living-wise... If you are entering an apartment with roommates, yes, it's going to be very difficult. It's going it's definitely going to be so much harder for you to find a place that allows you to come especially with a big dog because a lot of people like you know small dogs or maybe a cat is a little easier large dogs are very complicated especially with roommates most of them gonna be uh no pets allowed and what i noticed for myself because i have a dog that manhattan most apartments in manhattan allow pets which is awesome i'm not sure about brooklyn brooklyn i feel like it's half half depending on who's renting you the place and where it is Queens, though, which is weird, like Long Island City, Astoria, all these places, most of them, for some reason, are no pets allowed, which is weird. But I noticed that more with like older buildings, uh, with newer buildings, most new buildings, like large buildings that you just, they will allow pets, but it depends. Some buildings will tell you to pay deposit Some buildings will tell you to pay a fee depending on the pet size. Usually, like, for example, in my contract, it stays, and I have a small dog, but in my contract, it stays, states that if my dog becomes a problem to the building, the the building has the right to ask me to leave or, you know, to not have the dog, which is not an option. So I'll assume it's to leave. But yeah, they will put it in a contract because... Um, you know, when you, especially when you have a lot of tenants and if you have a dog that won't stop barking, if he's peeing on the building walls or whatever, right, it, it can become a problem. 
uh, private renting from private owners, depending on the owner. But yeah, definitely, if you have a big dog, I would what I would recommend is to move here first. Yes, you can. We have a few minutes left. You can ask me something. Um, if you move here for like um from a different country, what I would recommend is come here if you have the option. Come here by yourself, settle down, and only then bring your dog with you because otherwise it's going to be hella complicated. Even if you're like renting an Airbnb or something for the first week, it's going to be very, very hard for you to navigate moving to this crazy city with all the documents you need to bring, with all the all the things, all the bureaucracy, everything, like finding an apartment, signing up for services, doing opening a bag, like doing all of these things. If you also have a dog or a pet, any kind of like, obviously, like if it's a hamster, it's not a problem. But if you have a dog or a cat, it's definitely going to make it more complicated and it's going to make it harder to just do the entire move and everything that comes with it. So yeah, I would, that, that would be my question possible, but you need to consider that. And if you have more questions about dogs, I can definitely answer you more privately. We have one last question. Let me know, um, if I can answer that and then we're going to finish. Um, if you study in other countries, university finished and you want to get a job in NYC, is it possible? What visa do you need for it? Okay. So um, I'm not an expert on that. Something that I can tell you is depending on what you studied, it is depending on the profession, is it, it is possible that when you come here, you're going to need to like prove it in a way. So you need to like go through a course that basically changes your qualification like to fit into the American system, right? Especially if you're like a lawyer or a doctor, you I, I feel like you're going to need to have some kind of like studies here just to adjust to the, to this country. Cause it's very different, especially like lawyers, law wise and everything. It might be not accepted at all. It really depends on your education, on your major, on your university, what you studied. Um, you can check with your university if it's accredited in America. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, let's say it is, and you want to get a visa, um, it's going to be a work visa, but then you need somebody to hire you. You need, again, let's go with a law firm or a hospital, right? Like the, you, you need to find an employer here in America that's willing to uh, hire you on a work visa and to do all the documentation with you. So that way they're your sponsor when you come into America and you're coming to work only and specifically for them. And then you can come here on this visa. Um, there are other types of visas. There is a business visa that you, if you invest in the American economy and you hire a certain amount of people, I think it's 10 people, you can get this type of visa. I think Elon Musk has it. He has this visa because he's Elon Musk and he invested a lot of money in the American economy, but he got this visa, right? Um, so... There are a lot of ways. If you're an artist, uh, this, it's an artist visa. It's not going to be a work visa unless you like coming to work for a label or you're coming, you know, to work for a certain studio and they're like, yeah, we're going to give you uh, all like the work visa. We're going to issue you that, which is very hard. And most companies won't do it unless you work for a company that has a branch in America and then they're sending you to America for a certain time. I... For this question, you know, I actually, maybe I can find a guest that's doing that because I know people that do that, that came from their country to work here because the work sent them to do that. So maybe I can find a person who can answer that. But th from what I know, this is how it works. Uh, if you need to, uh, uh, if you studied, for example, if you're a doctor and you want to come to America and they tell you that you need to get accredited here in America, you'll probably get on a student visa. And after you finish that, you're going to get your OPT. I think it's either OPT or J1 visa, which is a work visa. Um, and then you can, you know, but there are very, like, there are a lot of types and I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an immigration expert, so I don't want to like mislead you, but this is from what I know. So, um, this is something that I would definitely consult a lawyer about, but yeah, we're going to finish because I need to run to class. I don't want to be late. I have a crazy day today. Um, thank you so much for tuning in guys. Um, that was a fun conversation. I'm going to do that more. I'm going to do lives here because I see that you're tuning in and it's fun. So for those of you watching on YouTube, you have the links of all the things that I mentioned down below. This 
podcast is going to be um, on my page so you can watch it later. Um, don't understand your smileys. I have no idea what that means. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. That was fun. I'm going to see you in two weeks and hopefully with a fun, fun, fun guest. And uh, you have a great Wednesday.